Hey folks, it's Rithgar here, how you doing? Welcome back to the Garage Tour of FS19. Today, I have a number of different things that people would like me to test out, and a few things that you want me to look at. I have said that I'd like to do a little bit of forestry. I don't know if I'm actually going to get to forestry today, because I'm going to, I've got a little list of things that you'd like me to do. First and foremost, you wanted me to do something with the train, so I'm going to put on the switch to train a minute, and we're going to see... How are we doing with the train? Where are we with the train? We are cruising along here. So you can see, in answer to the question about the cameras that we've been having. Um, oh, I can't zoom in on the camera a minute. I can zoom out, but I can't zoom in. That's very, very easy. Until they get the controls issue sorted out, you've got to go gamepad controls on here. And then you've got to go camera zoom in and out right there. I want to... Backspace that one, backspace that one there. Keyboard controls, uh, camera zoom in and out. Right, it's only now on the wheel up, wheel down. So if I save controls there, I am... One thing I am doing is I'm playing part of the game without a, key, uh, with a, without a steering wheel and part of the game with a steering wheel. And I do wonder if that may be affecting it as well. Um... After I've done this series, when I'm just doing one episode a day, I may go for a while without uh, with doing everything using a steering wheel. I'm not quite sure at the moment. We'll, we'll see how that works out. Uh, oh, in order to be able to have anything activate, I need to switch now to a different vehicle and then switch back to the train. Now I can zoom in and out properly. So it's just because there's excess bindings on there and those extra bindings they can cause some confusion for the game itself so there's not a lot that you can do about it you just kind of got to work through it so the first question that people have asked me is can i put a vehicle on that trailer on the back and do something with it now why are we going so slow i put the cruise control on but we stopped anyway Oh. It's been <laughs> oh, that's fantastic. It's quite quiet. Um, I have had it sort of turned down a little bit. When you go in close, you get quite a bit of noise. One thing I do quite like is that the, the sounds for distance on this have been tweaked and altered. So that you no longer go... You no longer have sound being, you know, it's, it's not like excessively loud um, when you're a little bit further away from the vehicle. It, you, it didn't used to sort of be quite so easy to be able to like, get into the vehicles. Um, now, I'm wondering how I can do this. I think if I go forward a little bit more, it's getting a vehicle on there because we don't have any loading ramps at the moment. There's no loading ramps involved with this, with the trains anywhere on, on well, at least on, not on this map anyway. Um, so if I'm going to get something onto there, I've got to be able to find a way to get it up on there in the first place. And uh, first up, the, the first thing I thought was, well, could, do we have a ramp on here? And I don't think there's anything that I can place down that's going to allow me to build a suitable ramp. So, how else can we do this? We, we gotta, we're going to have to think outside the box a little bit here. I did wonder about maybe putting one of these decorations down and then using that to kind of jump up onto the train or something. Um, and then I thought, well, no, actually, possibly our best way of doing this, right, is if we go back here and under miscellaneous, this one here seems to have a lot more fluctuation with the height that you can use right i go control q i can raise and lower this one a lot more than i can any of the others now this object collides with an object i don't know what it's colliding with it's probably colliding with the drain um right it's not letting me place that down anywhere along here because it thinks there's something there and I'm not quite sure what object it thinks is there. So it's, it's, it doesn't like the idea of me placing anything down there anyway. I'd, I'd like to. I really would. I'm, I'm, I'm begging. I'm asking it. And it's not letting me. So it's saying that I'm colliding with an object. But I don't, I don't know what object I'm colliding with. So that 
particular idea doesn't seem like it's going to work. So then we go with this option. I'm wondering if we can do something with this. Well, actually, there's two options here. There's that one over there, that trailer over there. So let's let's go in here. We'll buy another tractor. And I think we want to go... We're going to large tractors today. And we're going to go with uh, the Deutz Series 9. Go with that one. We get a big engine on that one, and we'll stick with the standard wheels on this one today. Oops, I do that. I want a bigger engine, standard wheels, and buy. There we go. Right. Now bring you out of there, and then I want to jump out of there and drop into that one there. Just wondering if this trailer, whether we could like set the trailer down and use that as like a, a ramp, but then. Actually, now that I look at it, that's not going to work, is it? Because you've got the, um, you you got the bit at the top. So I don't think that would actually. I mean, we can try. We we can take a look at this and see if there's anything that we can do with it that might help to do this. We we'll bring this trailer along over this way a minute, and I want to set it into loading position like that. So we, we do have a loading position there. I just don't think we're going to get from the said loading position to... Oh, hang on. No, let me unhitch it a minute. I don't think we're going to get from said loading position to being able to do anything else. This Deutz looks absolutely fantastic. It really does. That looks like a beast of a tractor, doesn't it? Does that not look like a bit of a beast? Sounds really good. Okay, that thing, that thing does look absolutely gorgeous. That looks genuinely gorgeous. I am I am loving this Deutz. I want one. I want one in more gameplay. Future gameplay. I want one of those. Uh, so next up, we, we've already got a car on the map. So first up, if I go to the garage, let's sell a few of these. Uh, the, ar the armor track we can... Actually, I'm using that one up the top, aren't I? What was I using the Agristar for? Remember now. Uh, some of this stuff can... We'll sell that one. That one can go. There we go. And we will sell the mana too. You can go as well. I've got a Massey Ferguson kicking around somewhere. And, okay. Let's not worry about the rest of those. We had... Where's, where's the rest of the... Where's the trucks gone? I had pickup truck. Oh, there we go. We got two pickup trucks over here. So I'm going to sell both of those because they're off elsewhere on the map at the moment. Sell you as well. So that we're not using you. And then we will go into Le Garage. And we will go to Le Cars over here. This one... Actually, no. I'm not going with this one. Yes, I am. I am going to go with this one. Let's, let's change the colour, though. We, we want to change the colour. This time we're going to go with... Massey Ferguson Red. Look at that. Look at that. Absolute beauty. So we'll buy that one for 31,000. Okay. Come out of there and then drop backwards. Where's my new car? Don't you go starting up. So it does. After a while, he will auto start up and he'll carry on off around the map. That's quite cool. Right, now we got this one. There he is. I love the horn on that. I love the horn on that. I also love the deep throaty roar of this engine as well. A ute, some of you are calling it. What on earth is a ute? I've never heard of that. Uh, well, I have heard of it because I've heard you people talking about it. Um, doesn't look like that particular method is going to work very well. I do like that he seems to be trying to self-level. Not very successfully, admittedly, but he is trying to self-level himself a little bit. <laughs> right. Option two. This is option two. Is over here, look. I'm going to go with this one. And I'm going to get that log fork there, and that's going to be my first option, is to see if I can use the log fork to pick up a vehicle, and we can put that one onto the train. I don't know if this is going to work. I don't know if you can use any of the vehicles, um, if you can pick up the vehicles. This one, I feel, has probably got our best chance of being able to do this. The JCB wheel loader is, as far as I know, 
coming into the game. It will be here at some point. I don't know when it's going to get here, but as far as I know, the JCB that we all know and love is going to be coming into the game. Right, I'm looking at that. I can pick that one up and I can put that one around onto the trailer. Right, it's not particularly smooth. But that did seem to do something there. I was um, I'm sort of underneath it. I suspect closing the log grab down is not going to help. No, that's not going to help with picking it up. It doesn't, like, grab hold of it on the ends to make it easy. I mean, really, ideally, I, I, I just want to move this trailer out of the way. We, we, we don't care about the trailer. And there's our ute out of the way as well. That's brilliant. Now, if I can just move this trailer a little bit. Like that. I mean, this is this is also a, a thing I wanted to find out, was uh, whether or not we can actually move stuff around with a wheel loader in the first place. And to answer that question, it looks like we can. Which I'm thinking is a good thing, because it means that we've got sort of better luck at uh, resetting machines. Because you, you, you very often you struggle to move stuff around previously. Well, I did anyway. How about the rest of you? I didn't try that. Uh, yeah, I, I really didn't try that often to be picking stuff up and moving it. But this is the big question. Can we put an item? Because obviously there's going to be maps where you're going to get um, ramps that you'll be able to drive your flatbed onto. So the question was... Can we put a vehicle onto the train and then drive around the map with it on the train? So if I can just get this one up onto this trailer here. I'm trying to do this as gently as I can. And I'm using... Remember, I am using keyboard steer, so give me a little bit of credit here. That's all, that's all I ask. Don't judge me so harshly. Drop you down a bit. Right. Uh... Okay, okay. Yes. Oh, nice. Right, that one's up there. Don't now catch it, for goodness sake. There we go. Right, that one's up on there. That that one's up there. You jump into here. I'll straighten that out. And it's moving around on the back of the train. It's sitting on here without any trouble. We don't have a camera extension at the moment, so I'm not... What's going on now? Jumped out then. Uh, yeah, we don't have any kind of camera extension mod at the moment, which means that we don't have the ability... Look, and also, the strap doesn't go over the top of the vehicle either. But no, a camera extension mod... I feel would be better because then we'd be able to look at the vehicle down there a little bit more closely. And nope, 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 stop. And I'm going backwards. That's not changing. That one's trying to stay the same. Now that it's behind the other vehicle, it is changing it. Right, it's pushing it along. But it's acting as though it's colliding with it as opposed to sitting on top of the trailer and riding along with it like that. So, in answer to that question, no, you cannot have it on the train and riding around on the map, by the look of it. Doesn't seem to be a thing that we can do. It's just dumped it off onto the ground now, and it's not going to let it work. So, no, unfortunately, that is not something that we can do. We've now thoroughly tested that and ruled it out. I'm a little bit disappointed with that. I'm hoping that maybe something could happen in the future that would be able to change that round. Maybe someone would be able to design a train that has got chocks on the front and back that would stop it from moving. That would be the only thing that I can think of. Uh, because you did, did you notice that when we started, when it was moving, it went up against the other the carriage there and was held in place by it. So if you've got a flatbed that has chocks on it that you can activate because we've got straps on here and you can activate the straps from within the train now. That does actually work. That's something that we've tested and seen. Um, you could have the same with chocks. You put the vehicle on there and then these chocks just lift up out of the bed by you know a little bit. And that's going to stop the wheels from moving. That was, 
the only thing that I can think of that might work with it, I don't know. I don't know if that's even a thing, but that would be my kind of workaround idea on that. Whether it would could ever be a thing, I, I don't really know. But no, overall, it doesn't look like that's much of a possibility. So the next one that we wanted was a very simple one. While I'm, why aren't you letting me? Let me, let, let, let me jump out. Okay, you wouldn't let me jump out of that one. Occasionally, we do get one where it won't let you jump out. Now, chainsaw. There we go. Can we cut the bushes down, the little shrubs, with a chainsaw? Doesn't look like it. Now, if you remember, on the Gorala map that I played in FS17, they had some bushes around. Whereas, if you went into the bigger bushes like this... And you cut right into the middle. It actually had this high-pitched whining sound. And then the bushes, they shrank down to nothing. And then they disappeared. You were actually able... It was coded into the map. You were actually able to use a chainsaw and cut down the small shrubs. But no, we cannot cut down the small shrubs in FS19 base game with a chainsaw. Whether a mod will be added that will allow you to do that. Say with a strimmer or something like that. Maybe that'll come later on, but at the moment, no, that's not an option. Obviously, it's a different layer, isn't it? It's a different foliage layer to grass, uh, because that is only affected by plows when you allow create fields, whereas when you use, uh, like, the roller, that doesn't do it. It's And cultivators as well, they don't do it either. So that's answered that question. Um, overload, right, yeah. Uh, oh. Right, there was another thing here that somebody wanted me to look at. It was actually in forestry machines here. There is a trailer in here. So it's not in that forestry machine, I don't think. Unless it's under... Is it this one? No, that one doesn't have an option. That one's got no option. So that one is for logging right there. Um, and I'm pretty sure this one... Yeah, that's the wheel brand right there. You've got Trailborg. You've got Olaf, Sfors, Ecotrack. Magnum, Kovacs, Evo, Eco, Track, Magnum. Okay, some of these are quite cool. I like this. I, I love the colour on it as well. It's brilliant. Uh, and you got those. Okay, so we're not getting that today. So it's not on there. It must be in this bit under forestry. There's the forestry equipment right there. The long neck. This vehicle can transport tree logs. That one there. Okay, that looks really cool. I'd like to try that. that I'll, I'll, that's the sort of thing I'll try just in standard gameplay rather than on this series. This series is not going for very much longer. We've only got like a few episodes left. So I want to sort of cover the, the more extreme different items that we've got. This one. Ah, this is the one people are telling me about. Because people are already using this trailer for bales in FS17. So they've actually changed it now. So you've got a bale configuration on this trailer. Um, and there's your bale trailer. But you've still got to load them manually with a crane. Which quite frankly I think is going to drive me insane. Because I don't like these cranes. I don't get on with them. I never have. Um, that being said. We need to give it a fair shot. So let me jump out of there a minute. And come back to you. Right. So there is our crane. I actually find it easier to use the change the cam yeah you got two camera angles on this one start up there's that camera angle right what are you doing why you're doing uh right well as i don't know what the controls are doing yeah um i'm not a hundred percent sure what they're even doing with the controls like uh, i am a little bit confused as to which way they're all turning um i mean yes admittedly it's going to be right control group detach select camera fasten unfasten belts oh in order to put the stand down i think you've got to um hitch it on with the tractor first so we've got that one there Fasten, select camera, select tool. What's that? Detach. There's no detach. Support. Oh, there we go. Right. That one there. So I got the different control group. And then I press this one. Right. So that goes round like that. 
there. But then... This makes no sense. The bit for bringing the arm in and out is, is making no sense to me whatsoever. Right? It's extending and bending the arm at the same time. I, I don't really get what it's doing with that. Whether that's... Is that an auto... Oh, I see. Maybe that's like an auto height thing. I can spin that one round. Right. I'm keeping my verdict out on that one at the moment. Let's just very quickly skip through to none of those. No, not you. You. We'll just grab that one a minute and we'll hitch this one onto the back of the trailer so that it stabilizes it. We'll bring it out here and we'll see what we can do with loading a round bale. Some of you get on well with these cranes. Me, I've never got on well with these cranes. I tend to try to avoid them like the plague. I really don't like them. I don't enjoy using them. I find them to be unpleasant. And it is the single most frustrating experience I have in any version of Farming Simulator is trying to use any of these cranes. So I don't... I just, I just don't do it. Um... Let's leave you running a minute and we'll jump onto you. So I want to bring you round this way. And then, now, we've got a bale over there. So that just sort of brings it out and then that lowers it up. I do see how this is working now. It's kind of reduced the number of uh, controls that you need in order to be able to make it work. Which I guess is a good thing. I wonder if I can do that. Right, the joystick is not auto set up for it. So I'm not going to bother trying to set the joystick up. Uh, I'm still used to the FS17 controls on these, which is going to affect the performance of me being able to use it. Move that over there like that a minute. And then I'm going to release it there. Lift that one up. And then I move that one over. And then I'll bring that one around like that. Uh, right, so to move it sideways is a different control. It's the opposite mouse button to what it used to be. That does make it a little bit more difficult. Uh, but to move it in, that's more difficult, right? I'm. You, you basically, you press and hold the left mouse button. And then you, re you, you push it up and down like that. And that brings out the whole thing. It's kind of a self... It is self-leveling, though. You look at that. It's holding at that level, which I think, once I get used to this, this is actually an improvement. Now that I've looked at it and I've sort of assessed it a little bit, try it. This is why, this is why we've got to try these things. I think that is actually a quality of life improvement that is a genuine improvement. So I can lift it up like that. And I want to move it round. So I want to swivel that one round like that. Now I want to... Sideways doesn't seem to do very much. There isn't sideways. I can lift it up like that. So I want to bring it back round here. So this is on the left mouse button now. I'm bringing it round like that. And then this is just one movement on the left mouse button. It's bringing it all the way in towards me like that. And that's a very smooth movement. That there's, there's a lot less playing out. That's the right mouse button there that's lowering it down. And then the left mouse button is bringing it over and bringing it back as well like that. You don't have a separate mouse button anymore for extending out the boom. That's no longer a thing. Twisting it is still both mouse buttons. Right? Uh, but I just, literally, I just bring it back like that. And it auto-extends the boom to what the boom needs to be. Right, and then I do that. So then I want, what I want to do now is I want to push that down towards the end of the trailer. And it's literally, it's going out and it's going straight. It's keeping that. I did that with one mouse button and one mouse movement. I think that is actually a significant improvement. As soon, soon as I've sort of figured out what those controls are, I can say hand on heart that I am no longer thinking that I would never want to touch one of these with a barge pole. Now that I've tried it, that is a seriously significant improvement 
for the crane arms. If the rest of them are like this, I can actually see myself using the crane arms a little bit more. I don't know how much. I'm still not wild about crane arms, and maybe it's going to take a little bit more getting used to. But like, I've put that one down there now, and I want to take it back. Like, that's that's auto do it. All of that is automatic. It's auto leveling, auto moving it back. That is such a huge improvement. That is absolutely brilliant. So thank you very much for telling me about this one. It's in the forestry section. Unusually, it doesn't sort of give a reference to it in the bell section. But it does work. And the controls for the crane arm, as soon as you've gotten used to them, using the mouse only, major, major, serious, significant improvement there, which I'm very, very impressed with. Massive thumbs up on that particular point there. That is a That is seriously good work. I did not think that I would be able to get onto a crane arm in this game and say, actually, I could see myself using this a little bit. I don't know how much I'll be using it, okay? I'm still not, you know, insane about these things. But there's a, there's a noticeable quality improvement on that compared to what it was previously. The bale was juddering around a little bit. I imagine there's still going to be some issues with picking up logs and stuff like that. But that was very smooth and very nice I quite i quite liked it so let's just very quickly go in here we go to the komatsu there that one's got a crane arm on it and we are obviously going to take those and we are obviously going to have the biggest tracks that we can find and we're going to buy that one right there uh, we'll come out of here a minute and that one Oh, no, I've, I've, I've gone too far. I want to go back. There we go. Right, so we've now got the Komatsu Forest Edition. Now, this thing, it looks very cool. There's no denying that that looks very cool. Fasten, unfasten tension belts. Change driving direction. Left control B. Change driving direction. So now we're going, this is forwards. Same as the Ponzi one, this is. Okay, that's very good. I like that. And select camera, toggle cruise control, stop engine. So I'm just going to remove that. I'm lifting that up. We have exactly the same on here. Okay? This is the logging control. All I've done was just lift the mouse. I, I just pushed the mouse button forward. That's folded that up completely into storage position with one simple mouse movement. You haven't got multiple mouse movements moving on that. That is absolutely fantastic. That really is. And it works. That's it. That's the thing here. This it, it does actually seem to work. I can bring that out to wherever I want it, lined up with a log right there. I can then lower it down using the right mouse button to get it into position. I can close it like that. Nice and easy. Right mouse button up into the air. Like that. So it's kind of the right height. Left mouse button. Bringing it back this way. And now, still left mouse button. I'm just dragging the mouse button down at my mouse... No, I'm just going to move it sideways a bit. Straighten it up. Dragging the mouse mat... Uh, the mouse down my mouse mat a little bit. Not very much. Still one single movement. Dragging it down my mouse mat. I'm not doing anything else to it at all. Get it to that position there, which I think would be about the front, and then release. Okay, that was smooth, that was easy, that was well thought out. That is a significant, major, major improvement on handling logs. I am really seriously impressed with that. I really am. I am absolutely loving that. Um, now, there's a couple of other things that people wanted me to check and test. I'll look at those next time because there is one thing that I want to test on here that I haven't looked at yet. Uh, we, we know what the Ponzi Scorpion Kings are like. So we're going to go with this one right here. We're going to go with those. You, you literally a choice between the two. The Magnum, the Kovacs, the X, the Evo Baltic. What's, I don't know what the difference is between any of these, but uh, I like the look of that bad boy right there. What's the Magnum? I see it's got like extra. Okay, we'll use the Magnum on this one. Uh, we're going to buy that. Uh, yes. Okay. Back. Back. Uh, it was just escape out of this one. Okay. We'll jump off of there. And we're going to go and see if the crane arm 
operating this one works in a similar fashion because if it does again i would consider that to be an improvement um, I really like these logging machines, and I do get on well with them. I've used them a lot. I'm assuming that we can cut palm trees, so we're going to go and we're going to cut down a palm tree. Do we own this land? This be the next thing is we, we've got to make sure that we own this land. We do. We own the land around the shop. This is ours. Nobody can shout at us. We're going to cut down these trees. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to cut down a tree over here. So bring that one out over this way. There is a tree. We have found a victim. Now, we used to press B, so I'm going to press B again. Yes, that has started that one up. So then I want to go on here, and I want to select the tree length. We've got one meter to start with. Uh, it's the same control. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, back to one. So it's the same as previous. It goes up to eight meters. So I'm... I'm going to get rid of those controls, and we're going to see if the new crane system is also... It does. I can tell you right now, the new crane system also applies to this one, as well as the other one. All right, I'm raising up and down. I don't want to raise up and down very much, though. Why are you so limited? I'll bring you back. I can lower you down like that. But I can't pick you up, right? You've got a, you're very limited on the height that I can take you up. I don't know why. Right? You, you lower down. But you're very limited on the upwards height, which might make it difficult for cutting on a slope. That could indeed make it difficult for cutting on a slope. Let's, um, there's nothing else that I can do on there. There's no additional controls or anything like that. So we'll bring that one round. Uh... There, we've got swivel on that one. So let's bring this one over here. What it's doing, it is keeping it close to the ground, but if you're trying to work on a mountain, the, the lack of ability to lift it up may hinder. That, that, might, that might be a drawback. I don't know if it's just the Komatsu or if it's this one as well. So we'll, um, we'll very quickly go and buy the Scorpion in a minute. I love the fact that it stays level to the ground. This is so much simpler, staying level to the ground. Okay, so we've got that far. I'll now press X. That has grabbed hold of it. And it's not the same control I'm used to to lifting the thing up in the air. I need to use the other mouse button to do that. Go up like that. That's the left. The, uh, the right mouse button is up and down. Left mouse button is everything else. That's it. So it, 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 it is easier. It's just going to take a little bit of getting used to because it is different between the two. So now we press X and we drag you along. We've got a big log chopped off there and we've got another smaller one off of there. It's left a load of leaves on the tree. I guess, personally, I would say that's probably a bit of a bug. Uh, I don't know how much of a bug. But this one's very limited in the height that it can lift off the ground. So we're going to sell this one now. And then we're going to very quickly go and buy the other forestry machine as well. I will sell that Komatsu. Uh, sell you. Yes. Okay, you know I probably could have used that one to pick a log up. But still, we'll, we'll worry about picking logs up another time. Uh, sell that one as well. Okay, and then I want to go back into here and I'll buy the Ponzi Scorpion. Uh, worry about the Sampo Rosenloo another time. That one right there, I want to buy you. We've got the Olaf Source. I, I don't know why they're all in blue. Really no, but yeah, uh, we're going to go with the Kovacs ones right there, and I'll buy you for four hundred and forty-eight thousand. Okay, so we've got that one now, and I don't want to go to you. Uh, let's leave that on there. Right, this is one that I want to go to, and uh, all I want to find out is does this one have the same limitations? Right, I'm putting that out there. No, it does not have the same limit this has very this is very very different oh wait a minute oh wait a minute oh i am impressed okay this is still the king of forestry equipment as far as i'm concerned bring that one back to there right and now all i'm going to do is i'm going to press the left uh the right that's the left mouse button that is keeping that end piece exactly level all the way right everything it's it's brilliant uh, if I press and hold the right mouse button, and I lift that one up, 
That's lifting up to there. Are you watching this? That is auto doing everything. And it's keeping that machine. It's raising it straight up. It's applying everything. So all you have to do is move forwards and raise it up. And it does the rest for you. And that has got a much bigger range of movement. So this is more for mountain work. And then the Komatsu one would be more for other types of work. But that is just beautiful. That is absolutely fantastic. The improvements that have been made on the crane arms for this version of the game are just phenomenal. I am seriously, seriously impressed with them. Uh, I cannot emphasize that enough. That is a huge, massive quality of life improvement that is going to make life so much easier for everybody involved. It really is. But anyway, that is all I've got time for on our garage look today. I will be back tomorrow with another episode. We've only got a few days left of this. And then after that, I will not be doing any more of these garage looks. So if you've got anything you want me to test, if you've got anything you want me to try out, then get into the comment section and let me know while there is still time for me to do it. If you've enjoyed the episode, then please hit down below and give us a like. And if you really enjoyed it, then please tell your friends all about me. Get them to come and watch as well. I'm getting very croaky here, so we'll wrap this up very quickly. Uh, and yeah, that would be awesome. And until next time, thank you very much for watching. This is Frithgar. Goodbye, and see you later.